one out of eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer during her lifetime. The same is true for men. One out of 1,000 men also will be diagnosed with breast cancer during his lifetime. Per year, we lose 40,000 women to breast cancer. I am a breast cancer researcher, but I also work very closely with survivors who dedicate their time to advocate for breast cancer research. What I have learned from those incredible people is there a gap seems to exist between the science, behind therapy and research, and the patient. Why is that? From my perspective as a researcher, I know that we do not do enough to reach out to you to tell you about what we do. So today, I want to take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about breast cancer research and the therapy. We have come a long way in breast cancer, and the mortality rates are steadily decreasing every year. This is largely due to better screening, early diagnosis, but also to the targeted therapies available. In the area of personalized medicine, we have come to realize, however, that not each cancer is the same. What do I mean by that? So we call this tumor heterogeneity. A tumor is made out of very different cell types, but not only that, it also has, each cell has also different genetic makeups. Now, if you put this in a patient, you can be reassured that the metastases are also different from the primary tumor to the brain, to the lung, to the bone, or to the liver. That is not all. The cancer also varies from patient to patient. So you can imagine that seems to be a big problem and can be overwhelming. However, we view this also as an opportunity. And let me tell you why that is. So we want now, we can now address tumor heterogeneity by doing analysis like this. We collect many, many patient tissues. We analyze them for the level of gene expression. And then, putting them in a mathematical analysis, we try to group the patients together based on the gene expression level. Then, we are trying to take this group of patients and see what do they share, what do they have in common, a phenotype like drug response or survival. But then the hard part starts where we have to figure out, okay, we know that group of patients share shorter survival. What is the gene that is driving that? And what are the genes which are only bystanders? That is the hard part. The goal, however, is, and we will get there, is that we will have a drug for each metastasis, for each primary tumor, to eradicate cancer completely. Now, let me talk a little bit about what we currently do with breast cancer patients. How do we treat them? So, in breast cancer, we treat patients based on their subtype. The majority of patients, progesterone-positive breast cancer. Another subtype of breast cancer are breast cancers, and they make roughly 20% of all the breast cancers, are HER2-positive. The rest of the breast cancer subtypes are triple negative. They don't have estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, or the HER2 receptor. For estrogen receptor-positive cancers, we know how to treat them because we have learned that the hormone estrogen binds to its receptor, which then sends a signal to the cell, to the DNA, telling the cancer cell to divide nonstop. We can block this with drugs like tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors. For HER2 positive cancers, we know that there's a receptor outside of the cell, which you see here with the blue dark spots. And when those receptors are overexpressed, when we have too many of them, signals are sent to the cancer cell DNA to divide unstoppable. However, we can block this with drugs like, like trastuzumab, which shuts off that signaling and kills the cancer cell. With triple negative breast cancer, we don't do so well. There are no receptors to be targeted. So the standard therapy for those patients is still chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. However, we have learned through personalized medicine approaches in the past years that those triple negative breast cancer cell, cells seem to share a feature which is called genomic instability. So what does that mean? The DNA in those cancers is usually broken, which leads to fusion of chromosomes. There are a lot of mutations in those cells, which makes the tumor highly aggressive. 
why does this matter? We know that once a DNA is broken, there is an army of proteins which repair that DNA to prevent the, the cell, benign or cancer cell, from dying. We will exploit, however, this principle for triple negative breast cancer cells in the following way. Imagine those cancer cells sitting on a stool and each leg represents a DNA repair pathway. We have four major DNA repair pathways. We cut off one leg, the cancer is still alive. However, once we cut off the second leg of that stool, the stool tips over and crushes the cancer cell. Now, this is being used right now nationwide, internationally, also in Pittsburgh, also in my lab, to actually exploit as a new therapy for triple negative breast cancer by chemically inducing the inhibition of DNA repair pathways. So the idea here is that we have two drugs taking out two of those stools so the stool will tip over and the cancer cells will die. How does this look like? I want to give you a little glimpse from my lab. Here you see the blue dots are nuclei of triple negative breast cancer cells. When we treat them with ionizing radiation, we are inducing DNA damage, and then this army of proteins, proteins rushes to the DNA damage and tries to repair it. With the new compound we are working on, this is not happening. There is no DNA repair. What then happens in the cell, in a cell which has not been treated with the compound, the DNA is repaired and all the damage goes away. There is no red staining of the nucleus. However, when we treat our cancer cells with the compound, the DNA is not repaired. The cancer cells die. I want to end my presentation by coming back to the patients. And I urge everybody of you who is a patient or who knows a patient to educate. Educate yourself. Know what your disease is. Know what your options are. Know what your treatments are. Seek out peer support. Peer support is a powerful thing. You meet people, human beings who have gone through the cancer, who will be able to tell you how it feels like to worry about dying, not seeing your children growing up. This is not something a physician can give to you or a scientist can give to you. This is only something you can learn from a peer. Challenge. Challenge us. Challenge us scientists. Challenge your doctors. If we are not able to explain to you what your disease or your options are, we are doing a pretty bad job. And then you have to let us know. Consider a clinical trial. Clinical trials are the essence of drug progress. Right now, they are poorly the, the accrual is very poor, and that probably has to do with the fact that many, many years ago, clinical trials have been run almost unethically, where placebos have been given and no other treatment versus the, uh, the drug of um, choice. But this is different now. Everybody gets standard treatment plus an experimental drug, so clinical trials are a good option. Overall, it is about to empower yourself. Without empowering yourself, you will not be a good advocate for yourself, and you need to be with this disease. Thank you very much for your attention.